COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper. Have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. Good evening, isolators. Aaron Davis is supposed to be my guest tonight. Aaron is having difficulties, technical difficulties. She's been away from radio way too long. Way too long. Can you hear me, Aaron? All right? Oh, oh yeah, just bring her mic up, Parker, if you could. Hold on, one. Guy, on. I'd fire him, but you know. Hold on, we had your microphone down, so we're having our own troubles here. It has been a day of, it's been the last two days of, uh, of troubles and things going on technically, so we can see you. And Rob, yay, yay. and and okay. he's fixing whatever it is needs to be fixed. Great, and now I can't see you because I just okay. Let me see here: microphone, <laughs> speakers, test audio, and let's see here. Siblings, see siblings, we... testing. Can you see One, me now, two, Kevin? Three. I can see you now. Good. I can't see you, but you know what? That's okay too. Well, well, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna muddle through this, and eventually we'll get everything fixed because awesome. it doesn't matter because you're with me. This is well, fantastic. Thank you. And, you know, there's so much to be said for radio. I know you you made your bones in television all those years, but honest to goodness, and I'm getting out of camera range here, aren't I, too? Because um, I don't have a big, my, my monitor of you is the size of my thumbnail. So everything is happening. <laughs> but uh, I see that Deborah Thompson says, hi, Aaron, and Carol says hi. And uh, I apologize for the tax screw-ups. Oh, please don't apologize. Please don't uh, apologize. But it looks, so But easy. it looks as though you're down here like this. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll come down too. I'll come down, down too. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll How's do that? this. Oh, see, now I'm better? sure. All right. There, now, now you get that. My eyes are up here. Okay. So how's that, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It worked so well the last time, right? And then I'm, I emailed Kevin today and I said, how do we do this again? And he thought I was talking about tax. And... Um, so what we did was he just said, well, I call you. Okay, so we're sitting here and then, oh my God. It's like this every time we FaceTime with Colin on weekends too. It's like, uh, we just forget. And, and it, the, the hard thing is we never knew. So the learning curve is steep, my friend. Okay, let's start from the beginning here. How, <laughs> how are you, Aaron? What? <laughs> How are you? Oh my God! Well, um, hmm, I'm good, thank you, Kevin. I'm really good. It's uh, <laughs> it's great to have a reason to put on face and stuff. And I always say that, but I mean, I've basically gone from zero to six hundred in the past twenty minutes, and my heart rate <laughs> is going. What happened here? Are okay. you? Are you? Yeah. This is what we can do. Then I'll tell you. And okay. everybody at home, all right? Yes. Everybody at home, we're gonna take a breath. And I okay. think it's always great every once in a while when, when we get that way, because I get that way a lot. And, and so, but I forget sometimes to just sort of say, I can slow this down. Right. All right. So right, we can, it is, it is something within our control. And now I can't hear you because my headphones are, is mercury in retrograde, Kevin? Because uh, you know what, why don't we just say uh, it this is? is just, uh, this is just bad here. So I don't even know. Okay. We're going to try another Jack, Jack. And okay. I'm going to bring, <gasps> it worked. Robbie, you're a genius. There. Ah, okay. All right. So, oh, so now you can hear me, but not you. Oh well. Okay, you, talk to me, sweet you, Kevin. You, you can't hear me now. Now I can. I just we, have we've to spent hold the it last. We've spent the last five minutes saying, "Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now?" Um, Aaron, you sent me the most beautiful video. Uh, now everyone knows you're an author, and they know that you also are a hummingbird person. Where do hummingbirds come from? First of all, how do they factor in? Well, it's a funny story because uh, it was the second anniversary of Lauren's passing on May 11th. And I apologize to anyone who's already heard this story. But um, we were uh, on the San Juan Islands, which I can see from here. And they're in Washington State. And um, we were coming out of a house and getting packing up the car on May 11th to go do a little drive around the island. And this hummingbird just came up to my face and just kind of hovered there right, right in front of me. And it had the most fuchsia, bright pink chest. And I thought, well, maybe I better pay attention to this. So I did. And the cover of the book was supposed to be a butterfly because metamorphosis and coming mm -hmm. out of something and into something of beauty. And then I, I just got in touch and said, guys, this is what it has to be. And this is the hummingbird 
this is what it looks like. I didn't get a picture of it, but I was able to Google image it. And so that hummingbird ended up on the cover of my book. So that's the story. And you know, everyone thinks they're such a symbol of peace and love and stuff, but I have a hummingbird feeder and they are feisty. Yeah, very so, territorial. And, and yeah. And, and maybe there's a lesson in there too, you know, you can. You, so this is a picture you, that you sent me or a video okay. of the hummingbird feeding on top of your book. Isn't that incredible? A woman named Barbara, who is in my book, because uh, she lost her son, Nathan, uh, to tragic circumstances, very much like Lauren's. You know, he just, it was just very fast and very unforeseen. Um, and her whole thing is dragonflies, and she makes dragonfly keychains for everybody. But she decided to put a little hummingbird feeder on top of my book, and bless her patient heart, she waited and shot that and uh, and sent it to me. So Barbara, Barbara, thank you so much. That it blew me away. It was beautiful. It it is beautiful. The book is still doing well, and you are still doing well. And you are here once again. One of the most popular guests, of course, on on the program. Oh, thank you. And for good reason. And <laughs> uh, it. How are you doing at staying positive these days? Oh, it is really easy these days. And, and you know, part of it has to do, well, I, I guess I'm going to have to tell you my secret. And I haven't even told my journal readers, but I got the okay uh. from the people involved. And this is huge. It's huge. Is this, is this, gonna, like, is this like an exclusive announcement? It is. This is it an is. exclusive announcement? Parker, do we have any noises for an exclusive announcement? What do we have? <laughs> Just play anything. It, Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, a, a, a series of things came to pass. As, as people may know, uh, we had one child, our Lauren, and she passed away on Colin's seven-month birthday. And um, Colin is her, her son. Son, her yes, son, her grandson, and Phil's yes. son. And Brooke, if you're watching right now, this is a good time to, to take Colin out for, for a freezy or something. Um, but... Uh, she left us with this beautiful baby, and as life went on, Phil found this beautiful, wonderful woman, Brooke, who just leapt into their lives and decided, you know, she became a mom right away to Colin, you know, younger than Phil, no children. And um, and then they built this family, and last uh, September 30th, they added a gorgeous baby daughter named Jane. So anyway, COVID happens, everybody's at home, Colin's been at home, no school, and and uh, and one thing led to another, and and uh, Brooke had a, a health scare, and she realized that they didn't have the the support at home in Ottawa that they needed. And to make a long story short, they're moving here July twenty fourth. Fr they they're, and they're in Ottawa. 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 Yes. Oh wow, that's fantastic! Look it's at you. It's a dream. It's a dream For I didn't dare to have. For, I didn't dare to have it, Kevin. For a mom and a grandmother, that is major, major. I'm it so is. happy for you. It is the first. It is the first time we have felt like we have a bit of our lives back in five years since losing Lauren, and um, it. I didn't. Dr I dreamt it. I mean, every time we came up the hill to our house, we would pass this little elementary school that's so beautiful, and I'd say to Rob, "There's Colin's school," and you know, <laughs> most of the time he'd just so, "Oh, stop it! Just stop it!" And it's not like I was, I was, you know, pushing or cajoling or, or you know, trying to get them to come because they have a life there. All of their families in Ontario, but it just came to be that it was decided that. You, they, they contacted us and said, hey, here's what we're thinking. And we were like, oh, 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 what? So it's going to involve some big changes in our lives. We're not going to go away for the winter anymore. But that was something we were doing to chase joy. Joy yeah. has come to us. Yeah. That's, and, oh, that's and, such a wonderful way of looking at it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't journal about it yet because uh, basically it's just been confirmed in the past week. And... I'm almost afraid to let the secret out in case, like telling a birthday wish, it doesn't come true. It, okay. Does that make any we, sense? Yes, it does. It does because aren't we, we always have this inner feeling that if we celebrate too soon or we celebrate a joy 
that we're going to jinx it or, or something like that. No, 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 no. Yeah. We are all sending positive vibes your way and we are sending happiness your way. This, Thank you. This is, this is wonderful. Life changing. It's and life changing, don't, Kevin. Don't stress. You know what? If something happens, you'll have time to worry about it later, okay? <laughs> For now, I want you to actually sit and enjoy it and just be so thankful and so happy and don't think about anything else. <laughs> well, you know, there are Look a at lot you, of you're, things okay, to think about. Okay, you just giggled like a little girl there. I'm just, I'm just saying, wow, look yeah. at you. Yeah, and I didn't, you know, I didn't intend to, to sort of spill the beans tonight. I was going to, I was going to do it in this coming Monday's journal because I've cut it back to twice a week and we could talk about that too and talk about your schedule, young man. But <laughs> uh, I just... I, I like I said I don't dare but I mean the papers are signed the house is bought everything is everything you don't the, dare the, what Aaron what what don't you dare I'm too afraid to let it in because the let, past okay. five years have hurt I, so bad I know I know and what do you and, and if someone came up to you yes at one of the the, the many places that you speak and they said yeah. Aaron I don't want to let this good news in what would you look at them and say madam I would I would put my hands on their shoulders if I could touch them. And I would say, are you kidding me? This is the greatest thing to happen to you in so long. You've got to just soak in every second of it. Life doesn't give you gifts like this very often. That's okay. what I'd say. So rewind that tape and listen to it, okay? <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very happy for you. And... Um, Boy, I, I think that's just fantastic. I think that's fantastic. And you deserve it. And, you know, you, you've, you've paid your dues. You've paid your time dues. Time after time. <laughs> uh, I've done my sentence and committed no crime, Kevin. That's great. I want you, I want you though, to really work on being happy about it. Because, oh, I am. But no, but I, I, am. No, but I, mean, I mean, like, in anticipation. That it is going to happen. Um, Okay, it's going to. Yes, but let me tell you that, that part of this comes from what happened when, when Lauren died and we went, what did we do wrong? What did we do? Because there's this whole either karmic thing or the monkey's paw or my Catholic bringing, upbringing or, I, I, and I can't blame religion for this or anything in any way. It's just the way that the mind tries to go, okay, you had this coming. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it's it's, it's almost too much to take in. It is too much to take in because it's a dream we didn't dare dream. And it's everything we wanted to be able to be with Brooke and Phil and to have a baby in the house, a little nine-month-old baby. She'll be 10 months um, on the 30th. And just, no, she'll be nine months on the 30th. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, which coincides with my one-year sobriety date. So there's all kinds of things that are just kind of falling into place. Things that... to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Things yeah. to celebrate. And and just <sighs> and the thing is, we need when stuff like this happens, we need to lean into it. Quite mm -hmm. often, you know, when 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 bad things happen, it we, we tend to almost manifest more bad things. It, it it just seems to happen. You know, oh, why is this all? I, so the positive energy is, is, is definitely, definitely going to carry you through. And if you don't have enough, uh, every, okay, everybody, I want you to send positive vibes on the message board right now. Or oh, they have been for the last, oh, okay, Barker says you. they have been for the last little thank while. Thank you, thank you. I'm, gonna, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to watch this show back so I can read the comments, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it's unbelievable. And you know what? You talk about when something good happens, sometimes we want to hold it in because we're almost ashamed of our bounty or our joy and you know if you got a raise and you know it's 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 a, a little bump that's gonna make your life a little easier share it with people if it's two million dollars for sitting on your butt and doing nothing and everybody you know is suffering don't share it with people but in this case my news when barbara nathan's mom sent me that email it was the weekend that all of this was coming to pass. And I, uh, I, I, I wrote her back and I said, you know, I've been reluctant to tell you that uh, Colin and his sister and his parents are moving here because I know that Nathan left no children. Yeah. So there's a part of us that, that sort of almost mitigate our joy 
to suit the people around us. And yes, know your audience, you know. Uh, you wouldn't go on the air, for example, and say, hey, I just bought, you know, the latest Cadillac SUV or something like that, because you know that there's somebody who's about to get on the bus that day and they hate every minute of their ride. But I think that good news does need to be shared where you More. can. And it's why why we watch those amazing little heartwarming, you know, there's a bear in my backyard videos, <laughs> right? Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt there's a bear in your backyard. Good Lord, there's there's mm. deer and there's. Uh, eagles and, and 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 hummingbirds everywhere. You're like freaking Snow White. I know. <laughs> and, uh, and how are you, my friend? What is happening right outside your window? Oh, this is an amazing time in history, isn't it? it? It certainly is. And yeah, it's been a day right outside my front door. Take a look. Parker actually shot this video a very short time ago. Uh, a lot of it is, has disbanded right now, but it's all part of... Um, uh, protesters marking Juneteenth and uh, Juneteenth, which many, many people had not heard of mm -hmm. before this year. And I guess that's one, I guess one small thing we can thank Donald Trump for is that he really helped people understand why June 19th is so important, even though he had no idea. Um, yeah. But it was the, it was basically the last word to reach the final people who were enslaved after emancipation. And that was in Texas. And it took so long to get to the word, but it finally, you know, the, the word finally reached them. Yes. And now we need so badly to continue this momentum and we need to see change. Now, we're going to hear things from both ends of the spectrum. We're going to hear get rid of all police. And then we're going to get we're we're going to hear of get rid of all Black Lives Matter. You know what we need we need calm and we need common sense and and we need to just say listen no one who who is in the right mind is is asking for anything that is 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 should not be attainable. Absolutely. I'm just looking at that footage too here Kevin. And uh, it's it's absolutely astounding to me that um you know something like juneteenth isn't taught in the american school curriculum certainly canada we have our own history of slavery to be aware mm -hmm. of and 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 you know the underground railroad and and everything that that brought slaves to canada or emancipated slaves to canada after they were freed too because slavery did exist here but also, you know, the way that they were treated. And Lawrence Hill's Book of Negroes is such a great, mm -hmm. great, great book. And it was an eye opener for me. And we owe it to ourselves and all Canadians to know more of our history. And I, I you know, I, I wish that they hadn't started with defund the police because that's not at all what the movement is about. Not, you know, the, not, you, not the main not part defund. of the movement. Yeah, not defund, exactly, it's reallocate yeah. money. Like take money away from tanks and all of this you know, battle ready uh, equipment mm. and give it to mental health workers so that if there's a crisis call in an apartment, a police officer is accompanied by a mental health worker. You know, all of these situations that could have been not, you know, perhaps defused if somebody there knew what to do, what to say, what to look for. And, you know, there are so many police officers who I imagine strap on every day and are terrified because, and I'll, get, I'll look again at the United States where everybody has a gun. I would be so petrified to pull a car over for a legitimate mm -hmm. offense. And I don't care, you know, what color the driver is. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying I'm pulling a car over. I don't know if that person has a gun. I would be terrified. So here you've got all of these cops who are nerve endings on toast to begin with. And um, I'm not in any way, please let me be clear, I'm not in any way defending the misuse of force that we have been seeing. Thank God things are being videoed um, and, and it's being shared widely and perhaps there will be justice. I heard one cop in the Breonna Taylor shooting is going to be charged or suspended or fired, fired is the word. The others are on uh, paid leave. but. It's just that there's there's so many mitigating factors and defund is the wrong word because right away Fox gets to go on and say, well, they're taking all the police away. So yeah. now what are you going to do? They're coming for you. 
Have I made any sense there? I no. try to parse my words so carefully because well, it's so easy to get canceled. It, it, you know, it, it is it is very easy. And one of the problems, too, is this cancel culture. So everybody is so afraid of saying anything. You know what? We're going to say things and we're going to make mistakes. The very first thing that needs to be done is we need to realize once and for all that there is a problem because so many of us are, are ignorant of the fact that there actually is a problem. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, you know, so we need to first of all say, okay, there's, there's definitely a problem here. And then it's going to be, a, it's, we're going to be moving a mountain to try and change a system that has really, really been set up for, you know, putting down people of, of race, whether it, it is black, indigenous is, is, is of course, uh, in, in Canada is, is our shame. I think we all want the same. I think everybody wants peace and everybody wants everyone to be equal. At least most people do. Yeah. And so let's start there. That's our starting point. That's our starting yeah. point. So how do we change this system? Let's, and I think if we look at it, that we can do it, but how are we going to do it? Yeah, yeah. And well, I, my hat's off to these protesters. Today, they were very peaceful in that. There are some people who are extremely angry, and yeah. so that boils over. But there are still that group of people, the anarchists and, and that, who are just there to cause trouble. Well. What happens when they cause trouble? Everyone looks and says, oh, look at those protesters. It, you know, it, it, you can tell that the cause is not a just one. We have yeah. so much noise out there. We have so much noise. Yeah. And, yeah, and then you've got things like the Boogaloo, whatever, whatever. What a stupid name. Anyway, it sort of suits the IQ. But, you know, these people who are, you know, far, far right, and they're just joining in the fray to do as much damage as they can to the cause. So, I mean, yeah. And Antifa means anti-fascist. It's why our parents and grandparents fought in World War II yeah. against, and against fascism, right? Yeah. So Antifa means anti-fascist. And today, Kaylee McEnany, the, uh, the White House spokesperson said, you know, one of the reporters said, is President Trump against fascism? fascism? And she said, yes, absolutely, he's anti-fascist. Well, duh, you just <laughs> said he's Antifa. Would you please get your message yeah. straight? And anyway, anyway I, I think that all, you know, making Black Lives Matter uh, the, the, the big message right now is, is so important. And, you know, we both, I'm sure, had discussions with people who say, well, all lives matter. Yeah, I'm sure. But if there's a house on fire on your block, don't you go to that house that's on exactly. fire, not the ones that aren't burning. Yeah, can okay? you stop here and water down my house before you go and yeah. put out that Hello? house and rescue that baby? Uh, yeah, exactly. So I choose to look at things positively as much as I can. And I look at the, the, the protests and the discussion and, and everything, and, and even the wounds that are being opened, I'm looking at them positively. I'm looking at them, now we've got some attention. And let's not let this time, let's not let it just completely go away the way it did after Rodney King or the way it did after, after so many times there, there, were, there were protests. This needs to be the time that everybody joins hands, everybody and says enough is enough and they've got they've they you know if if you want inspiration go play back uh, dr king's comments on the mall that 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 day and uh, i was reminded of that day that at that point he was not very popular among white people no of course not and and, and so now go back and play those and use that as inspiration but let's join hands and and let's do this together and know that we we can make a difference so. Let me uh, let me correct something. I said, of course not, but I mean, among some people, yeah. some people despised him. There were plenty of white people who oh, yeah. who heard his message and wanted to join hands. Yeah, mm -hmm. and here we are, two privileged white people who really we don't have a voice in this. Uh, it's like people going crazy over Aunt Jemima pancake syrup yesterday. I was like, stay in your lane. This is not your fight because this is not, you know, um, a logo that is offensive. You know, if it's offensive to me, that doesn't matter. What matters is the people to whom it's offensive. And, you know, it, 
this, the word snowflake is thrown around so often, and yet people need to be heard. There, for decades, people petitioned them to change the logo on the Aunt Jemima bottle, and uh, yeah, whatever. And and now they're finally they're finally doing something. If this if this movement, and it's not about pancake syrup, it's not about you know the the little things, but those little things you know, can can be significant if they make us go, yeah, hey, wait a minute, this was based on a slave and was a stereotypical mammy character. And I think that, we, you know, it's time to move past and, that. And these are, unfortunately, sometimes these things sort of add to the noise. Yes, I think it's important to address it and look at it. But right now, I think we really need to go after the big fish. I think we need I to... think this is the noise. I think Aunt Jemima is the oh, noise. Oh, oh, it's... I, I'm hearing what you're it's... saying. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying right now, and, and to anybody who's saying, no, we have to change this now, we have to change the name of the city of Vaughn and the city of Kitchener, we have to change this. Okay, those things will come. One thing at a time, yeah. I think yeah. what we need to do is first and foremost, we need to realize there's a problem. And then the changes have to come within government, and business. Yes. So yes, yes. what we need is we need especially black people to be in office at the top making changes. We need yeah. black people to, to have chances at promotion that a lot of them don't have now. And read the studies on this. It's amazing how how that glass ceiling is not for just women. It's it, it, it's for people of, of, of different races as well. So we need them in the boardrooms because then once they're in the boardroom, they can say, hey, guys, do you know this Aunt Jemima thing is really offensive? And, and yeah. it, that's where we need it to come from. Yeah. And, and for everyone who says Obama was president for eight years, why didn't anything happen? You had Mitch McConnell, who from day one said mm -hmm. his job was going to be to block anything he tried to get through. I mean, even the Harriet Tubman on the bill. As on the uh, twenty dollar bill, as soon as uh, as soon as Trump got in there, that was the first thing to go, and it was just sort of you know setting setting the tone, the orange tone for how everything was going to go uh, from there on in, and we all saw it coming, and and you know. We can be hopeful, and I think hope is what's going to get us through, but also the, the isolation of the pandemic that made people stop and look at who they are and what's important. Life is important. Connection is important. Health is important. COVID hit more people below the poverty level and of color than any other, you know, uh, and, and of course the elderly as well, the elderly. But uh, it's, it was time to stop and take stock, and this is what's happening. Do I wish the protesters were all wearing masks? Yes, deeply. But they're not going to be wearing them in Tulsa tomorrow at COVID Fest. Yeah. Well, so, and, and, and like I say, we have, to, we have to admit that there's a problem. And we, I know it's very easy to look south of the border for, for you know, these yeah. problems. However, yeah. keep in mind... Discrimination in Canada is not just with our indigenous people, or not with the indigenous people, or not our indigenous people, not with the indigenous people. Black people still to this day are, are you know, suffer oppression and, and are very scared when they're pulled over often by police. Uh, but we also had segregation here. In fact, your $10 bill, if you look at it, Viola Desmond is on that $10 bill. And movie she, theater. She had yeah. had enough and stood up for the fact that she had paid the same price for a movie ticket that white people had, but black people were, were told they had to sit in the back balcony. And she said, no, yeah. I paid to be down here. And she did, and she got arrested for it. And that was yeah. before Rosa Parks happened. So wow. it was happening here in Canada. And to this day, there is still the same. It's smaller you know, more isolated than, than, than it is in the States, or at least not in everyone's face. But it happens a lot. Now, it's in, time. In Toronto, it's much more prevalent in places hey, where there... why did the police chief resign? I'm out here on the West Coast. What do you hear, Kevin? What there, do you know? There's all, you know what? There's all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of word going on right now. Uh, he said he's done. He wants to spend more time with family. Oh, I, we I know that line. You wanted to spend more time <laughs> with your family, too. I wanted to spend less time with my family. I don't no, know. I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, he took a knee. It was it was great visually. He did the thing, you know, and 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 then just like, oh, what? Mm. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it. it but anyway. Let, okay, I mean, this is, a, but in essence, 
this is a golden opportunity for the city of Toronto saying the priority for the next chief needs to be earning the trust of the entire community again. And yes. it could be, this could be a new beginning. So why he retired, I, you know what, I'll leave that to speculation. But right now, okay. let's take this as an opportunity and let's say, okay, yeah. it is time now. There are people who are petrified and for good reason of the police, for very oh, good yeah. reason. So yeah. maybe this is an opportunity and this is a chance. So, all right, I don't, you know what, I, I wanted to get to this survey Oh, the, yes, yes. And, the, and while the we're whole... talking cops, before you do, yeah, Hyde of Flow in Buffalo, she's a cop and she's a great person. So if anybody is getting the uh, the the impression that we're bashing the cops, no, no. I've dated more cops than I care to count. There, um, that doesn't, <laughs> that sounds are... like you know, some of my best friends are cops, but you know what I mean. I just, I don't want somebody to, to to parse this thing and go, uh, it's very awkward for two white people to be talking yeah. about this, except that I would be out marching too if we had one in Victoria. There have been sit-ins, um, and uh, and I'm not comfortable being out. I've got my mask, but we're going to we're going to go through this together. We are all in this together, and it's time we realized it. I think anyway, we, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, we, we both we both realize there are far more good police officers than there are bad police officers. There's mm -hmm. far far more. So we we know that. Okay, yeah. I want to get to this survey because um, it is uh, we are we are seeing isolation slowly wind down in 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 an effect uh, for police slashing uh, your. Oh, no police bashing. You're doing great. Okay, good. They say. Oh, that's from Flo. That's from Flo. I love you, Flo. Okay, that's from Flo in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. and Flo you know, in Buffalo. And you know what? You know, and, and there were a number of Buffalo police officers who were outraged at what happened to that, to that, that the elderly man who was, who was protesting. Don't take the fact that those officers who were, and it was their tactical unit. Don't take the fact that they all resigned from the unit. They didn't resign as police. They didn't quit as police officers. Mm -mm. They just resigned from, from that unit. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, okay, I, I'm just going to say that there are far more police officers who are looking at that, shaking their head, and, and, and that. I'm going to leave it at that because this isn't what we were, we were going to go on about no, today that we just went no, on for no. 32 minutes. Uh, well, actually, really? no, only 20 minutes because we spent the first 10 minutes saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it, no, that is, that is, that's it, right? That is and the way things are going. Me. No, that's the way things are going with Skype and Zoom and oh, all that. Oh, man. And when things go wrong, it's so hard to remember to breathe, isn't it? Instead, <sighs> you just start to twirl and I go, wrong. Okay, you know like what? Mary Tyler Moore. Before yes. we do this, we have not done uh, what we're grateful for. And I think we need that more than ever right now. Uh, okay, so let's let's everybody start telling me what you are grateful for. We've got it up. Uh, we got the the board ready for you on the screen because I think we need a, a pick me up a little bit right now because there is. I'm grateful for the heat. I know I know it affects a lot of people poorly. I know it's probably I don't know 13 degrees and raining in Victoria right now, but. <laughs> No, it's about 22 with partial cloud, and I'm looking across at a <laughs> snow-capped Mount Baker, so there. Oh, I love Mount Baker. Oh, I know. Mount Baker. I know you do. All right, so, but what are you grateful for? What What are you grateful for today, Erin? Something Me? Maybe, something, I want, I want you, okay, I want you to search, I want you to rewind the tape of your day in your mind, and I want you to think of something that you're grateful for that perhaps you wouldn't have thought of before. So I want something smaller, or what may have been insignificant and completely unnoticed. Okay, well, my big thing, which is family coming, mm -hmm. that is my, my big, 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 we're going to Disney World moment. Um, <clears throat> my little thing, Kevin, and I have to tell you this, every night, because I like the sounds of the crickets it plays, I say, hey, Google, good night. And she comes on and says, what time you, would you like your alarm set for? And I say, no alarm, Google, <laughs> no alarm. Oh, she's talking to me now. I'm not talking to you, Google. I'm on... <laughs> oh at this time we don't have any alarm she says what are you even talking about now i know how rob feels um <laughs> unsolicited comments out of the corner that make absolutely no sense yeah he lives with me yeah i am grateful for no alarm and uh every moment that i woke up at three o'clock or quarter to three you know the song i am i'm singing to the choir here <laughs> i embrace it i wake up at oh, nine yeah. or at ten and and with the coffee and and 
the, the world is already going and it's afternoon in Ontario. I don't care. And no. that's what I'm grateful for. That's fine. every day. So uh, I'm grateful for my job, says Tracy. Uh, grateful for my first haircut in four months. I Mine like is on Sunday. Look at oh. this, Tracy. Look at I, or whoever sent that message. I just, oh, God. I don't know if you saw the show I did a couple of weeks ago. I cut my own hair. No, I did not. You look pretty good. Oh, I didn't for a, quite a bit after that. Yeah. Well, my dad, who is all, like he's a billiard ball with a dust, with a little bit of dust, um, he, he always says the difference between a bad haircut and a good haircut is two weeks. <laughs> exactly. And that's, there, and you, there go. you go. Okay. Uh, let's get to our survey results. Parker, let's play the, uh, the intro if we could. Right? Huh. Now, like I said, as isolation slowly winds down, now it's not over and we're not being allowed out and everything is not 100% all, all, of a, all of a sudden, but we're starting to see, I mean, today in all of Ontario, except Toronto, Peel and Windsor, we saw restaurants reopen, malls reopen. Uh, we're now allowed social circles. Uh, what's happening in BC? Uh, well, Dr. Bonnie Henry, who is, uh, there, there will be books, there have been songs written about her, there will be statues, uh, has told us, you know, be safe, be calm, be kind. Um, uh, there are bubbles. We haven't, uh, we haven't really expanded outside of our own. We're still distancing. I have an aunt and uncle and we were going to be seeing them, but now they've got company coming from Alberta in a little bit. So they're staying super careful. It all depends on where you are. You see, it's been a month since we've had a new case on the island. Yeah. And uh, apparently the same is uh, said for Newfoundland and Labrador. So there's something to this island thing, folks. Um, but uh, it's it's so weird because, like, I was in the Canadian Tire the other day and, and only about a quarter of us, excluding the staff, were wearing masks. I was getting the side eye from a couple of guys who were, uh, I don't know what they were thinking, and frankly, what they think is none of my business, but I'm going to do this for you. Mm -hmm. And it's become this political thing, which I can't even believe. Yeah. And of course, it starts from the top. And I think our leadership has done a great job of, you know, trying to convey the message. But unfortunately, people who hate Trudeau are going to just not wear a mask out of a big FU to, to JT. So what are you going to do, Kevin? What, what, what are you going to do? FU. What does FU mean? Hmm. Frankly, unimpressed. You're going to, you're, okay, you've got grandkids coming to live. You've got to clean up your, you've got to clean up your mouth, young lady. I, I use letters. I mean, even Sesame Street has shows brought to you by those letters. I'm sure of it. When is the last time Sesame Street had brought to you by the letters F-U today? Well, Felix Unger from The Odd Couple. Uh. Maybe he was the guest. <laughs> Tony Randall. I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Okay, so earlier this week, I put out a survey uh, and, and asked a thousand people about their feelings heading it because we're a little uneasy, right? So let's yes. let's go through some of the uh, what's that what's that uh, frankly unimpressed lol Mike oh, yes that's what fu means frankly unimpressed yeah oh wait what's what was that fun unlimited says Deborah yes Frankish unchained <laughs> Frankish unplugged yeah <laughs> the site of my new album that. that's how I do it. okay uh, so. Let's get to uh, this survey right now as we, uh, we take a look at uh, how people are feeling heading out of isolation. So the survey was called Your New World. Question number one, how does the ending of isolation make you feel? Survey says, well, a little anxious are 60% and then uh, looking forward to it, just about 50%. And then the rest is divided along there. So... People are still a little bit anxious, uh, you know, about 10%, 13% of people say they're, they're very stressed over this. What is the 2%? Because um, I've got two different screens. Oh, there it is. Other. Yeah. Other. So okay. it's other. So th what those are, be, those are answers are, uh, so I can read some of them. Very anxious. Okay. I fear people will not continue to wear a mask, self-distance, and also wash hands carefully. So they're worried about other people. Mm -hmm. um, cautious. It's a new world and things are not the same as they were. 
Um, was a little anxious when we started seeing patients again, and I'm not sure what this person what what person what this person does in the healthcare field. But we've taken the proper steps, and I am good now. So that's something too that you, you can take uh, as sort of solace is that someone who has seen the end of isolation so much for them was anxious at first, and then it became okay. So it's going to be like the first day of school, right? It's so weird, Kevin, because, you know, you leave your house completely trepidatious and then you walk out and it looks like the world that you, except for the change of seasons, it looks like the world that we left in the middle of March. So there's this massive disconnect and human nature is to say, okay, that's over. We made it. We survived. Let's keep going. But then you see that, um, and and the numbers in Quebec, for example, and Ontario, the numbers are, are still quite high. And in the States, the first wave hasn't ended. It's becoming a tsunami. Mm -hmm. We're talking Florida and Oklahoma right there in Tulsa for, for you know, Orange Fest tomorrow so that all the Covidiots can, can you know, yell how much yeah. they love them. I just, I just don't get it, Kevin. And, and the World Health Organization yesterday said the world recorded its single biggest day of new cases <sighs> yesterday. So yeah. it's not over. And it isn't. I, and I always tell people that because I don't want you to be caught by off guard later on that you think everything's fine. We've been we're coming out of isolation, so we can we can do this because we're you know it, it, we're going to hear more about this. So prepare yourself. But how yourself. do we deal with the mixed message? That's the yeah. thing, you know. Restaurants are reopening carefully. Stores are reopening carefully. If this is still in full swing and even you know highest numbers again, how are we to cope? What are we to do? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Let's, okay. let's go to the anyway the best go, we can. Okay, onwards, let's go to the sorry. next question. Yeah. Question number two. During isolation, I dot 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 uh, became a better person, got by okay, uh, am now more anxious and depressed than others. So those are the, the possible answers. So got by okay. I was yeah. I was really hoping to see more from the uh, became a better person. You know, by by having more time, by slowing down, by relaxing. But most people got by okay, and now the next biggest one, the next biggest group answered said that they are now more anxious and more depressed, and that is worrisome. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is. Well, there are a lot of people who are, uh, you know. Um, thank goodness that the government has been providing financial uh, stability and help for those who need it, most of those who need it, not all. Uh, that I can't imagine, you know, uh, we're so fortunate to know where our next meal is coming from, but so many people completely lost their jobs and it's going to be a long haul back. And that's got to be where that 50 or 49 percent comes in, Kevin, I would well, imagine. What do you think? Well, yeah. And, and I know that that mental health experts are very fearsome of what's going to happen in the next few months, not with COVID, oh. but the mental health damage that has been done and will be done. And so you are going to hear a lot about, uh, I know it's called, well, some, some call it the panic attack, some call it, uh, I can't, uh, sorry, the, uh, sorry, the uh, echo pandemic, I should say. Uh, so we're going to hear a lot more of that. And I'm really, honestly, I want to try and find a way to be proactive, to be proactive and help people. Yeah. And I, if, if I can do that, and, and I'm looking for work right now. So if you know of anybody who has a job, um, one of the, I, I think instead of going back to TV and back to news that I think I want to go back, but I want to go back in, in the way of something like this, like this show of spreading the word, trying to spread positivity, trying to get word out there that, you know, there, there is an alternative to being depressed. Mm -hmm. oh, it would be nice if the message could be, could be received like it is here tonight uh, by, by the people who are watching you. And, you know, but we are, we, we slid down the slide into the real housewives and, and all of that uh, form of entertainment. And if that's your thing, you know, good. I don't judge you. I watch a lot of Forensics Files and I miss Keith Morrison more than I miss, well, just Rob right now. He's out of the house. He left. <laughs> He's finally left me, Kevin. He did it while, you, while we were here, so I couldn't chase after him. Um, but I don't know. Is there a place for positivity? I hope so. John Krasinski started doing mm -hmm. a show, right? 
and it was all about good news and positivity. Yeah. So, because I think I think we've had enough. We've, we've been, had enough. We have been conditioned as a society and as a people to look for bad news, and right. we crave it. News that news garners better ratings if it's bad than it's good. If it bleeds, it leads, yep. And that's doing nothing for our anxiety. In fact, it's just making it worse. And so I, I think enough is enough. And I think that there, there's, it's one thing to be informed and stay up to date. And yes, there's bad news, but it's something else to, to be reminded of all the good and all the good news that is, is out there. We just sort of like, eh, so what, you know? Yeah. So there is good. There is good. And there is always, always a reason to smile. Yeah, it and it, it's just it is what you decide to take in and 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 how you decide to filter it because the power is within us unless you are living in an abusive situation or your home mm -hmm. is hell and and there are a lot of people for whom that is the case and I can't imagine being isolated with someone who was trying to harm me. Um and you know, I joke about us a lot, but I you know, I it, it's impossible. Imagine the echoes of that. And that is why we who have the ability to see things from a positive side, that's why it's so important we do. Because then we need to reach down for these people and help them up. And, and if oh. there are more positive people out here, you know, rescuing other people, this world would be a much better place. But you well, haven't we learned that through COVID, Kevin, too? And, and I came into the 19% where I came out a better person because I'm not a chef and uh, I've got, you know, the, the burn marks to prove it. But I was, I, when I made a big stew, I would take some over to our elderly neighbors or to our friends down in Sydney and they would drop off food that they'd made. And I thought, who ever does this except when there's a funeral or when you're sitting and, Shiva or something? It's, it was, a, it was an incredible thing. And do you know what happens when you drop something off for someone? They feel good. Now, when they, they feel do. good, you know what happens? They want to do something good for somebody else. That's right. And, and you feel so good. So on and so mm -hmm. on and so on. And before you know it, you're in a you're in a, a shampoo commercial. That's right. It, and it's viral in the best way. <laughs> that came out of COVID for me. Is, I uh, yeah. caring for each other instead of just I me mine. I think I think I'm a better person too. I think I may have found a certain calling. Except for that haircut, Kev. I. Well, I'm bringing mullets back. <laughs> Bringing mullets back, baby. I took you off of a really tender line there. I'm sorry. That's no, what I do. No, that we need no. that. I need well, that. You know, and, and you've always been this person. You've always been this person. I know you, we met, you know, we've, we've crossed paths, but worked together at the Easter Seals Telethon. And, uh, and I just, I just think you're a wonderful oh. power for good. Turn now, off the microphone, please. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Stop it. Keep it. Um, but really, there, that... is is there a place for you? Is there is there is there you know? Yes. The, I hope. I'm so. just going to say yes. That's what Good. I'm going to say. I'm just going to say yes. Where uh, were you when I was dating? Nobody <laughs> ever said yes. <laughs> All those cops. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. Yes. Oh, we have more. Yes. Okay. Best thing about isolation was survey says. More family time. Society slowing down got the majority of the answers. Um, good deeds done for each other. And then other. Hold on for one second. My, my computer says it's going to die. I thought it was plugged in. Hold on. Is that? Oh, did that? Hold on one second because you'll lose me. Why is that not plugged in? Oh, it's me. It's the Aaron no, effect. It's, it's, hold on. Just, why is this... Uh, Hold on. Oh, go on. There goes your network job, Kev. Sorry, they ha you, you had is. that network job. Okay, there we go. Okay. okay. No problem. I usually, leave, I guess the plug must have come out. Of okay. And, and I, told, I told you that, that, you know, I don't like complaining or anything like that. But dear Apple, and I love Apple, okay? I love Apple. <laughs> Me too. But can you make the plug smaller? Somehow. Those, those, can I see, have you got your plug there, Parker? The, the, the big white behemoth um hmm. you know what i'll just show you mine hold on and then i'll put it right back in oh you got that yes please can you show me? okay so here we go bring me back up okay i thought it was getting dirty for a minute there <laughs> so th okay let apple 
you know what? I, I could never go back to a PC. But please, can you make this a lot smaller? It comes out of the wall. like that. Some, some plugs it won't go into. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Oh, please. Here we go with our problems anyway. again, right? Anyway. Okay. Where were we? Question number three. We were talking yes. about society slowing down being the thing that people think was the most positive thing about isolation. Uh, more family time came in second. Not a close second, though. I thought that would, well, that would garner a bit, uh, some, more, um, some better results. Good deeds done for others. As far as other goes... Uh, more family time, society slowing down, goods... Da hold on, hold on one second. I'm reading the wrong thing. Responses, other. Um, I, I, I had time to uh, grieve with, uh, without, uh, uh, without having to put mm -hmm. a brave face on for the world. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. This came up so many times during these past few weeks with, with some of the, the people who are, who are watching that they've lost a loved one and it's tough because funerals, only a few people could be invited. Um, yeah. However, this person says, I didn't have to put a brave face on for the world. Aaron, can you, and, and what, is, what is that like? And I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm bringing up no. horrible memories. No, 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 no. After, they never leave. It's okay. After, after Lauren left us, and then you're Aaron Davis, okay? You're a happy morning person. And what was that like for you? Because you had you had to pretend, didn't you? Um, yes and no. Um, do you ever do yoga? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, okay. I thought you were fooled by this physique. It does look good in latex, but... Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, think about doing yoga. Sometimes, if you're in a particularly uncomfortable position, the yoga instructor will tell you, Put on a little smile, just a, mm -hmm. just a little smile, and it fools your body into thinking you're enjoying it. You know, like your sex life. Oh, anyway, wow. Um, Mine? Hello. Are you pointing the finger at me? I don't know. I, okay. it's, it's nice to pick on somebody else for a change. <laughs> um, no. Okay. So it, it, the, I took one full month from May 11th to June 11th off, and we, we did some work. We did some emotional work. We went down to a place I'd been in Connecticut, of all places. I don't know why. But there was a therapist and a, and a life advisor there that I, I had met through previous outings. We did that work because I always feel like I have to do something. Uh, we did two funerals. We had the one in Ottawa and the one in Toronto because her family was, or her, her worker, mm -hmm. co-workers and stuff were in Ottawa. Anyway, it was a busy, busy time. And then when I came back on June 11th, I knew I had a job to do, so I put on that little smile and fooled my body into believing that things were happy again because in that studio, things were normal again. Mm -hmm. Just for that four hours, life made sense. And after the show, for the first couple of months, I'd get, I'd get home and I was just completely exhausted and I likened it to being a, a, a scuba diver at the bottom of the ocean with no oxygen in their tank and just trying to get to the surface. That's what the four hours felt like. But I was surrounded by my work family. I was surrounded by the kindness and compassion of listeners and it helped me mm. a lot. So grieving, and, and there were people who would say, oh, I could hear you were sad today. And, and I would think, well, I really tried not to be, but sometimes my voice would be down yeah. there because I just couldn't pull it up to where it should be, you know? Um, so that's how I did it publicly. I didn't, I faked it, faked it till I made it. That doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, fakery has never been my thing. Uh, I'm not a good actor, as anyone who saw me in the role of fairy godmother in Cinderella, Ross Petty's panto, will <laughs> easily tell you, not an actor. I forgot but, about that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ham in a gown. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it just became, it just became a, a safe place to fall. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. But if you can have that time and use it to grieve and do what you need to do and not get up in the morning and not go to your job. And if you don't feel like putting on clothes all day, well, neither did the rest of us. You know, and there is no right way to grieve. There's no handbook. There's no GPS. There's no set of steps. You just do what you do to get through yeah. the other side because you'll never get over it. You'll only get through it. Yeah. So here is someone at least trying themselves to, to turn that into a positive. Um, yeah. Question number four. 
Now, we asked about the best thing about isolation. What is the worst thing about isolation? The answers were the boredom, weight gain and, le weight gain and lethargy, fear of the unknown, and again, the overwhelming majority went for um, fear, sorry, weight, weight gain and lethargy. That's wrong. Ah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I, I, yeah. You know what? I think I, I think I, I transposed those two numbers. I'm looking at my survey off to the side here. Okay, folks, I'm the one who did the, the math here and, and put the survey <laughs> together. So any mistakes, the buck does stop here. <laughs> It's fear of the unknown that actually should have uh, the, uh, more than 50%, actually. So fear of the unknown. So the boredom, I thought the boredom would have gotten a lot more numbers. Uh, but no, fear of the unknown. And isn't that the way it is with anxiety and stress all the time, is the fear and the unknown? I think you're absolutely right. We all want to know, when is this going to end? Am I going to a wedding? We just found out. And uh, I think it's going to be made public on Monday. So oh, our, you're revealing so much today. Well, I hope I'm not getting in trouble here. But our river cruise that was planned for this fall, a whole bunch of people signed up to go with my Cooper and me for Thanksgiving on the Rhine River. It has been put off for a year. And God bless travel agents. They are going through a special kind of hell this year, as are so many. But our good friend Jerry Coolhop at New Wave Travel, it's been, it's been, I can't even imagine. There's just so much stress for him and people who are so disappointed because how many 50th anniversaries were there and mm -hmm. special events and weddings can we talk about weddings yeah. but if it is that fear of the unknown when's it going to be safe for my child to go back to school mm -hmm. and you know am i going to be safe that's my my broadcasting guru valerie geller always said you know is my world safe is the first thing that people wake up in the morning wanting to know and we don't have an answer yeah. all we can do is the best we can um, Aaron, what are you doing tomorrow night? Nothing like everybody else. What do you got on? <laughs> I'm just wondering, can we, can we, can we do the second part of this tomorrow? Uh, you mean I have to do this again? Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> just don't, just don't take it out. What's that? Like? <laughs> don't take it out. What do you think I do? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm free No, no, no. I you know what? I should have asked you off the air. But, uh, but... No, no. Right. Let so me think. I, I, I honestly don't think I have anything on for tomorrow. Okay, so if you're not, we'll do like it Sunday. Everybody. Okay. okay uh, so... Sunday's Father's Day. What are you going to do for Father's Day? Why don't you and Parker I don't know. Do a show? What are you doing for me, Father's Day? <laughs> yeah. You had nothing to do with it. Listen, don't start any rumors. I think enough is enough <laughs> with that. Okay, so, okay. so tomorrow we're going we're gonna to take a look at, at the remaining questions. One of them is, um, how soon before you think you're willing to return to crowded events? So it's still going to be a while before we see theaters reopen and, and sports, sporting events. But how soon before you think you'll be ready to? Mm. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that. And we're Austin all... Matthews has COVID. Did you yes. read that? Yes, Parker was telling Austin me that Matthews. just before we went, we went on the air. Jeez. And, and same with Don Eden and Phil, and the Phillies uh, training. It's mm -hmm. just nobody, it's not time yet. And, anyway, sorry. And there is, oh, and look at this. Uh, can you put up uh, uh, Tracy's comment? Uh, look at this. She says it all for everyone. Two days in a row of Aaron, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I think that's excitement. Unless, <laughs> see, it depends on, it depends on the intonation, right? So, so it's either more Aaron or more Aaron. I, no! I think it's the former rather than the latter. Okay, That's so right, right, tomorrow though. night, Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'll put it on my social Four media. Four Pacific? Be... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Be there or be square. I, I, yeah. I, I, thank you so much. You know, I just, I forget how fun it is to talk with you. Just to gab. Oh, it is fun talking with you, Kevin, and honest to God, if you're like me when you get out among other people like normal, not people like you and me, I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm like a kid who's come back after summer vacation and has to tell everybody what they did and what they got and everything. It's just so good to see people. Well, I always close off every show. Now, I have never had a guest start the show with me and finish the show with me. Ne never, ever. What? So, that, oh, the last time I had Aaron on. Yes, that's true. Oh. Okay, yes. I was going to say, whew, okay, good. All right, that's still okay. That's still okay. Okay. Um, so right. the last line of my show is always, I don't know if you know it or not, what, what I say, take care of yourself. And so I'm, I'm going to get you to say it. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so as we, we close off and before we go to the extra here. So yeah. on behalf of, uh, thank you very much for watching. Yes. Aaron. 
Thank you. What am I supposed to say? Oh, um, take care of it. And before we go, what take care of yourself and take care of each, each other. Okay, we're going to try. Okay, hold on. We're going to try it again. I think our mics weren't working. All right. I'm well, very thank, thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us. Aaron, a pleasure as always. Hey, Kevin, you know it. Now what? <laughs> now say the line. Line. Oh, my and gosh. Remember. You know what? If we had advertisers, they'd be gone out the door right now. AaronDavis.com. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I want to tell people. AaronDavis.com. You got to check out her journals. Uh, and everything else, Aaron. I think she sells paraphernalia. I think she has. Don't sell Aaron, paraphernalia. You need Aaron Davis T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Davis uh, bobblehead dolls. Yeah, that's right. Oh God. AaronDavis.com. I want you to go ch check doll. it out. I want you to check it okay, out. Okay, honey. All right. Okay, so I'm supposed to say, and before we go, take care of yourself. Is that close? Yes, that's it. <laughs> Woohoo! And, and take care of each other. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Good night, Aaron. Did I get the part? Did I get the part? <laughs> COVID-19. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're done. COVID-19. Why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I am no toilet paper. I don't even have a stick. Take